What's up? This is Nate from Next Gen Diesel, and today we're going to talk about the 68 RFE valve body, and we're going to explain everything you need to know to make sure your valve body is not a problem down the road. So to begin, the 68 RFE valve body is a huge problem for absolutely everyone with this transmission, and if you have a 67 Cummins, you probably know what I'm talking about. So the biggest issue with the 68 RFE valve body, hands down, is that the valve body is the lowest quality piece of shit Chrysler has ever made. There's no other way to explain it. So we run into a couple of really big prolific issues with this valve body that lead to prolonged complications down the road. And there's a lot of problems inside the valve body that contribute to our overdrive clutch failure uh, amidst other complications that this transmission seems to suffer from. So today we're gonna walk you through one by one all of the components of the valve body, why they fail, and something that we do here at NextGen to make sure that these are not gonna be problems for you down the road. Uh, we take a lot of pride in our 68 RFE valve body. We make sure that there's no other one on the market that can compete with it. And to further explain why that is, we're going to break it down and we're going to break it down real simple. And uh, I hope that this video teaches everybody something that they didn't know about their 68 RFE valve body. So to begin, we take a 68 RFE valve body and we remove absolutely everything except the detent and the manual valve. Everything else disappears. The entire valve body gets completely broken down. Now, some other competitive manufacturers, they take the valve bodies and of course they break them down and they do their rebuilding process, but a lot of OE components tend to find their way back in, such as low reverse switch valves and things of that nature. Uh, so we, we like to do things completely differently and we've found that anything that potentially produces an issue just simply has to go in place of something better. So manual valves are not a problem in this transmission, so we keep them in place. Other than that, everything pretty much disappears. Now, if you look real closely inside the 68 RFE valve body, you'll see we have three different valves. It's a lot simpler than something like an Allison. We have the low reverse switch valve, which can be found right here. We have the solenoid switch valve, which can be found here. And then we have the manual valve, which can be found here. The manual valve being the only one that doesn't give us problems, stays in place, but is of course reconditioned. The low reverse switch valve and the solenoid switch valve are extremely problematic. The solenoid switch valve is the most problematic of the two. The complications that we have with solenoid switch valves is in many cases they will seize in place or they will wear excessively inside the bore. So this here is a factory solenoid switch valve. And the complication that we find with this is that its lands will get stuck in positions where it chafes off pieces of the bore. And the result is that we will have poor sealing inside our solenoid switch valve bore, which has a bore, di uh, a bore dimension of 0.453 inches in most cases. For some of you guys, it'll be 0.420 inches. Well, what we find is when we pull these out, these usually are not what wears. This will still be about 0.453 inches. 0.452.5 in this case. So we're not getting wear to the switch valves. What we're actually getting wear to is the bore of the switch valves. And so the solution that we have produced for this is uh, one, one that seems to be common in a couple of other applications is let's just ream it out. Let's ream and recondition this bore so that we have a consistent surface again for the solenoid switch valve. But now it's gonna get larger. Our switch valve is going to be larger because our bore is larger. So to start off, this is our solution for the solenoid switch valve. We take a precision machined unit that comes with a spring in the end. Now the purpose of this spring is to minimize the possibility for this switch valve to get stuck in place. Some manufacturers use this, the majority don't. However, this is a massive improvement that we have found that benefits our application with the solenoid switch valve. If you can prevent the solenoid switch valve from getting stuck inside the bore, we'll find massive benefits in terms of both longevity, gear shifting, performance, and a multitude of other critical areas. This is one of the most popular cross leaks in the RFE style transmission, and that is what we do here at NextGen to minimize that as a concern. Further, to show you what this looks like inside a unit, we have an accumulator block here that has the solenoid switch valve already installed. So as you can see, our goal here is to move the solenoid switch valve up and down safely and have safe reversion that gives us consistent travel and no complications with the switch valve moving inside the bore. 
That's the goal of this solenoid switch valve assembly. Now, secondarily, we want to make sure that these end plugs, these lands, are not producing issues wearing the bore. So using lands that are precision machined in a different shape where we do not have rivets equates to less wear and less probability of sticking inside the solenoid switch valve bore. So that is our solution for the solenoid switch valve that you're going to find here in NextGen when we build your valve body. Another complication we have is the factory accumulator piston. Now this is an OE accumulator piston and its purpose is to control pressure inside the valve body as it is being delegated to the appropriate clutch packs to activate the gear that your TCM is commanding. We have found that these have absolutely no capacity to hold the fluid pressure necessary. Now your TCM will command anywhere from 165 to 225 pounds maximum depending on if you have it tuned and how you have it tuned. Now let's insert this and see if it holds anywhere near that because we can vacuum test this, but there's no need to because it doesn't hold any pressure. It's useless. Now, it seals a little bit better once we begin to uh, you know, run it through some heat cycles and get some fluid going past it. The bottom line is no matter what you do, we don't have a good seal to those accumulator pistons. Now, most aftermarket companies have found a way to improve this using a billet accumulator piston. Some guys use four seals, some guys use two, some guys use scarf cut, some use X pattern. We have tested absolutely everything. We have tried every single piston on the market for these valve bodies and one has shined above all the others. And that here is gonna be this style of accumulator piston. Now it's made of a billet material and it's designed to be a lot more difficult uh, to, to leak. Uh, now, the goal here is that we have certain relief circuits cut into the piston already that minimize any potential for a cross leakage effect. Granted, it's designed to leak past the first ring, but not the second ring. And the benefit to this is that we have a smooth transition into certain gears without necessarily having the complication of cross leakage. So we're not losing line pressure, but we are smoothly delegating it to the appropriate clutch packs during the period of time where clutches are disengaged and new apply pistons are coming forward. So to give you an idea of how difficult it is to get these pistons in there for the interest of how much pressure they can hold, I'm going to show you the difference between the two. So we're going to start with our stock piston, which goes right in. That's it. Now let's go through the process of installing this piston. So that is what goes into installing one of our accumulator pistons for these valve bodies. Now this, this one's actually falling out. That's how much seal you get with the stock accumulator piston. Now our goal naturally is to provide a superior seal, which is what we get with our accumulator piston. In fact, you can see if you actually go in and try to manually push it out, it's kind of a bitch to get the thing out. Whole reason being that it has a superior seal to anything else that we've tested. And if we can minimize, or in this case, completely negate the concept of cross leakage in the accumulator passageways, we're going to have a much better valve body that's not going to fail you down the road and produce complications with your overdrive clutch pack over time. So let's clean this table up and let's get back to talking about what you can do for your valve body. So now we got the table cleaned up. We've covered accumulator pistons and solenoid switch valves and what we do to correct both of those and why they're a problem for your transmission. So now we're gonna go over to the accumulator backing plate. This one's real simple. So here's your stock accumulator backing plate. Now behind those pistons sit a series of springs. You have five springs uh, in total and four of those springs have an inner spring. So technically nine. Uh, now this is the plate that keeps them in place. We have an issue over time with these plates warping, cracking, and just producing complications that lead to uh, inadequate control of line pressure because the springs and the pistons are not well controlled. So this is a nice little metal plate, so it looks like it would do a good job, but it doesn't. It's extremely low quality. So we use this nice little precision machine plate that you're not going to bend and you're not going to break. And the benefit to this is that we have perfect control throughout time 
of those springs and pistons. We're not going to warp. We're not going to break. We're not going to bend. We're not going to have any complications keeping those pistons where they belong when they belong there. So that is the solution that we offer for our accumulator backing plates. Now, something you might see in time is we're probably going to start offering some charitable versions of these where we get these powder coated with special uh, little messages or colors on them. We're thinking about anodizing these with, you know, a thin blue line and then, you know, giving donations there or we'll maybe, maybe, we'll make, maybe we'll make some pink ones and do some breast cancer stuff. We're not sure yet, but that is something that you should expect in the future from next gen. Now, to move on, we have a separator plate in the valve body. Now, something you should think of the separator plate inside your valve body as is the head gasket of your engine. Now, let's think of the accumulator block as our block and the channel plate is our head. Now, the separator plate sits on the channel plate in the stock application like this, and it gets bolted onto your accumulator block. And the goal here is to produce a seal that cannot be broken, much like a head gasket, while it delegates where transmission fluid goes. Now, we have a lot of big issues with this separator plate and this channel plate. Now, here's where we start to branch off from other companies. Now, most other companies use a bonded separator plate, which we use. And the goal here is to have a superior seal between the channel plate and the accumulator block. This is a metal channel plate that's a little bit thicker and more uh, high quality material, but it comes with a paper gasket material bonded to both ends of it to help us have superior control of our delegation of fluid. So great solution, but here's where the billet part comes in. So what most other companies do not do is make any solutions for this channel plate. Yeah, you can machine this flat or lathe it flat. You can stone it. You can do whatever you want to do and make it flat. And you'll have a you know, great valve body for some time. But the complication we run into is that this is an extremely, extremely low quality, soft material. And so over time, it will bend. When we pull these off of valve bodies, we find flexion as much as five to 15 thousandths on this valve body. And the complication here is that this is like having a warped head. If your head is warped, your head gasket's going to fail. Now putting, putting a bonded separator plate, yeah, that helps, but try doing a head gasket without machining your head flat and tell me what happens. So we negate this problem completely. DNJ components has provided us with a billet channel plate. Now there's a couple of big differences here. Our billet channel plate that we use is designed to remove a couple of unnecessary oil circuits inside the transmission. By removing these, we have faster travel of fluid. Now this also has shallower worm tracks, which give us the ability to transmit fluid as quickly as possible. So what's the benefit to this? It means your truck shifts faster. And so by making your truck shift faster, we have improvements in heat. And the reason behind this is because shifting gears is one of the most heat producing things that happens inside the RFE transmission. Torque conversion and torque multiplication is another extremely uh, heat producing event. Um, but our solution here is let's minimize this problem altogether and let's make sure that our gear changes are crisp and quick and concise. And so that's one of the benefits to the DNJ billet channel plate that we use on these valve bodies. Now, a second benefit is, again, it's, it's made of billet. So a lot of questions that we get is what's the benefit of a billet channel plate? Like what does it actually do anything other than raise the cost? Well, yeah, it actually does a lot. Um, a billet channel plate's not going to flex on you. This is where we find most of our flexion in these valve bodies. This is what causes the valve body to leak. This is what fails over time. This flexes and then fluid travels throughout the valve body in a manner that it should not. This is not going to, this just won't bend. Um, in testing, it took 10 tons in a one inch apply area to flex this to 15 thou and then it reverted back to 5 thou. Unless you plan on running 10 tons of line pressure, you're not going to have issues with flexion of this part of the valve body. So what does this mean for you? This means that years and years and years down the road, you're still gonna have a solid stout valve body that's not gonna leak on you. So a lot of other companies, they produce valve bodies using this channel plate and that's fine. You're gonna have a great outcome if you know what you're doing. But the complication is longevity. And in next gen, our goal is longevity. Anyone that's been around our company for a while knows that our goal is to produce products that will hold tremendous numbers, but hold them for a long time. I don't think there's anything cool about a truck that has 1200 horsepower that you can only drive a quarter mile at a time and then you take it out on the street and it dies. That's not fun, that's not cool. 
So in the interest of giving you maximum longevity, we have implemented this billet channel plate in our builds to give you superior longevity in your 68 RFE valve body. But we don't stop there, so we're gonna keep going. So another complication that we find in our 68 RFE valve bodies is the low reverse switch valve. So this is overlooked easily. First gear relies on something called the low reverse sprag inside your transmission. Now, a big complication with first gear is that, yes, we have torque management, but first gear is one of the most aggressive gears for your transmission. Most of the power is just mushroom stamping your transmission. And that's aggressive, and that can cause complications with your sprag and your underdrive clutch pack. Now granted, underdrive clutch packs don't fail very much, but it is a complication that we experience. For first gear, there are only two clutch packs applied in this transmission, and it's the underdrive and the low reverse. So a complication we have found with the stock solenoid switch, or excuse me, low reverse switch valve, is that it will not necessarily wear the bore, but it'll get stuck, and it'll seize in place. We've found this only a couple of times, but it's enough for us to have a solution for it because we don't want anyone to have this complication. So we use a precision machined triple land switch valve for the low reverse. Now the goal here is that we have a system where lubrication exists between the lands and prevents us from having issues with poor lubrication and poor viscosity that negates our ability to safely travel axially throughout the valve body. So from an engineering perspective, the benefit here, what, what difference does this make for you, is you're not gonna have issues with first gear or reverse over time. Not a common problem, but again, if it's a problem, we have a solution for it and this is it. So if you have any concerns about eating up first gear or if you just simply like to tow, or if you just worry about your sprag, this is gonna help you. The sprag is held in first gear and reverse. So that's stated, there's a lot of potential complications in those areas, and this is our solution for that in your next-gen diesel valve body. Now, this is an option, but this is a very important option. This is the new solenoid pack that we use on our valve bodies. Now, a huge, huge issue that we have with these valve bodies is the solenoid pack is simply shit, and it fails from the factory. We have had these solenoid packs come from Mopar dysfunctional. Yours will fail very, very quickly. I don't know why this is such a problem. I don't think anyone does. But regardless, there's a third party manufacturer that seems to make them uh, far more superior to what Mopar does. I'm not a fan of third party, but to tell you the truth, we have tested this and we've tested it over time. And these ones are not giving us problems. That stated, you get a new solenoid pack with these valve bodies. It is optional. However, we highly, highly recommend it. Um, to explain what this does, this is the part of the valve body that's responsible for controlling which solenoids are activated and deactivated to help control the delegation of fluid. So this operates strictly on control and return voltage. So if you have complications with control and return voltage that derive from uh, either a poor ground or just simply a bad solenoid inside the solenoid pack. This is where codes like P0871 or 0988 tend to come from. 0871 can be a variety of things, but in many cases, it is your solenoid pack. So we give you a brand new solenoid pack, brand new gasket, brand new everything. Now, this is unrelated, but while we're talking about the 68 valve body, this is something that uh, I think everyone should know as well. To explain how this valve body process is shifting gears, you can see we have little black areas and silver areas right here on our detent area. The valve body solenoid pack sits right here. And as you move the gear shifter, this moves. The purpose of the valve body is to use these pins and black and silver areas to transmit information using Boolean logic. Now, if you've never taken an Algebra 3 or Algebra 4 class in college, basically, we'll dumb down the nerd talk. That just simply means that it's a bunch of logic gates and yeses and nos and yes but if blank and yes with blank that eventually get turned into binary logic that tell the transmissions control module what to do. So, this is a very important part and we really, really recommend that you get a new one with your transmission, or excuse me, with your valve body. Very important component. Highly recommend that you choose that option at checkout.
That concludes our informational video. So my name's Nate, I'm the owner. If you have any questions, feel free to call us anytime. Our phone number is 1-833-FUCK-GAS. That's really our phone number. We've been getting a lot of questions on that. Yes, that's really our phone number. I don't know how we got it past the FCC. Not really worried about it. 1-833-FUCK-GAS. You can also visit our website, nextgendiesel.com. We're open seven days a week, and we would love to give you more information on your transmission. And if you just want to call and get some technical help, we love to answer those questions. We're not just here to make sales. We would love to talk to you and teach you about your transmission and help you make an informed decision about what you need. So if you're interested in one of our billet valve bodies or you just want to get some information, or if you have an Allison or a 48RE or a torque shift and you have some questions there, feel free to give us a call anytime. We can't wait to get you figured out. Have a good day.